going on everybody it's your boy c4 here and today we're looking at the atlanta falcons for projected madden 16 overall ratings video uh as always this video hits 30 likes i'll upload a new video soonish 50 likes new video immediately uh i think uh there's been four or five videos up right now uh four of the five have hit the 50 uh the 50 likes immediately one of them is still struggling fact, i don't know why the cleveland brown my cleveland brown videos suck but uh you know come on browns fans step it up El Presidor. Anyway, uh, so yeah, uh, always make sure you subscribe to Beast Mode TV. Like I said, we want to try to hit that 10,000 subscriber mark by Madden 16, so that's near the end of the summer. I think we can hit that goal. That'd be fucking awesome. Um, but yeah, let's jump right in at the Atlanta Falcons. See the top five players on the roster. We gave Julio Jones a 95, uh, Matt Bryan a 91, uh, Matt Boucher 89. Really killing the special teams here. Fucking Atlanta. That's probably all you can say about right now. Uh, Matt Ryan, 88, and Roddy White, 86. Uh, yeah, let's jump into the individual. Uh, obviously, we're going to get Matt Ryan in 88. Uh, you know, Matty Ice, as you like to call him. Uh, only 6 to 10 last year. I don't, like, it's been the last two years. No one really is sure what the fuck is going on with Atlanta. Uh, aside from, like, their defense is garbage. I'm still really, really surprised they haven't added any big-time free agents there because their offense on paper uh, is, you know, up there with the upper echelon, especially in the NFC. Uh, without a doubt, top five offense in the NFC. Um, I now, but now they're hitting that weird thing where you know I think they passed their prime. The last three years was the prime of their careers uh, for the most of the guys because you know now you know they don't have a running game. Steven Jackson's gone. Devontae Freeman. There's a little bit of a question mark. Uh, you know, Devin Hester, Roddy White, all those guys are getting old. They lost Harry Douglas. So I mean, they they need to they need to peak. Uh, so it's gonna be interesting to see if they can find their way back to the playoffs again. Last year, I mean, the worst division in fucking NFL. Um, but, uh, oh shit, worst division in the NFL, but, uh, yeah, so, but Matt Ryan's still a very solid quarterback, back on topic here, uh, 4,700 passing yards last year, 28 touchdowns, 14 interceptions, obviously, uh, you'd like to see, you know, maybe cut off fucking four of those interceptions, attack them up to the touchdowns, but still, you know, one of the better quarterbacks in the league for sure, uh, looking at running back, obviously, Devonta Freeman, uh, highly regarded last year. Didn't see a whole lot of field time because Steven Jackson was there. Then again, they didn't really run the ball a whole lot last year. I don't want to 450 yards, one rushing touchdown. 225 receiving yards, one receiving touchdown. Uh, they lost to Quiz Rogers, but they still have this guy, Anton Smith, who literally only fucking runs for rushing touchdowns. It's outrageous. Every time we touched the ball, he seemed like he was going for a touchdown. I had five touchdowns last year. Um... But then here's the big guy. Here's the guy that a lot of people are saying he might actually get the starting job over Devonta Freeman, and that's Tevin Coleman. Uh, I think Tevin Coleman's an, gonna be an absolute fucking fun player to play with in this upcoming Madden. Uh, he's gonna be that that really good running back that's gonna have super low awareness, so his rating will be low. But he's got really high speed and really high trucking. Uh, think of kind of like a Darren McFadden type. Uh, so he's gonna be really fun to play with and fun to see in that offense. Uh, fullback, you had Patrick Demarco. We gave him a 76. Uh, you know, I don't know. He has one receiving touchdown. I guess that's more than half the fullbacks in the league, so we'll give him a little bit nicer rating. Uh, now moving on to wide receivers, receiver. Obviously, Julio Jones is a fucking animal. 104 receptions, 1,600 yards, and six touchdowns last year. Uh, what can you, There's nothing else you can say. Julio Jones, I would say, personally, personally, just if you take stats out of it and I had to take, list my top five wide receivers, he'd be in my top five in the league right now. Uh, Roddy White still... Uh, at 32, still being really productive last year. 80 receptions, 900 yards, and seven touchdowns. Um, Devin Hester, you know, was you know seemed pretty viable at times last year. Uh, almost 40 receptions, 500 yards, and two two touchdowns. So that is making him more than a one, you know, really one-dimensional player. Uh, they had Leonard Hankerson over from the Washington Redskins. I always thought Leonard Hankerson, uh, very very solid wide receiver. And then they drafted Justin Hardy, who's one of like the all-time uh, college leading receivers. In history, so that's going to be interesting to see how he fits in there. Because obviously one of these guys really needs to take uh, the spot of Harry Douglas. Because Harry Douglas, even though he was a number three, was very integral uh, to, what, to that Atlanta Falcon passing attack. Uh, now we get tight end. Obviously since uh, Tony Gonzalez is gone, there's been no one there to really fill the void. They thought this Tololo fucking guy was going to be it. He wasn't. They had Tony Moyaki, who I actually liked in Kansas City. Uh, but he's kind of got injuries and stuff and slowed down. They got Jacob Tammy. Uh, you know, one of Peyton Manning's old buddies. But, I mean, really, there's some questions over here at tight end. I would have liked to see them address tight end in the draft at some point. Uh, left tackle, Jake Matthews, 76. Obviously, I would say a little bit underwhelming from uh, where he was drafted. I think it was his what, he's second or third overall or something like that, like two years ago. Uh, or last year, actually. Uh, but still, you know, it's going to take some time. 76 is not a bad rating for him. Uh, but definitely hasn't had the success of some other rookies. Uh, offensive lineman, that is. Then you got Sam Baker. Uh, solid veteran left guard, 77. Center, Joe Hawley's the, you know, 
below average center, so we gave him a 73. Right guard, John Asimov, probably the best guy on their offensive line. We gave him an 85, former uh, Kansas City Chief. And then right tackle, Ryan Schrader, we gave him a 79. Uh, so now looking at the defensive side of the ball, Croy Bierman was literally the only guy that was able to find the quarterback last year with four and a half sacks and 15 starts. Uh, still not that great, so we gave him a 78. Uh, looking at right end, O'Brien Schofield comes from, I want to say, I know he played for Arizona and Seattle. Not sure what team he was on last, but he was actually a pretty good, uh, you know, a package type player. Wasn't always, wasn't always starting, uh, but he should be good for another four or five sacks. Uh, that was a solid move there. They got Adrian Claiborne, who's been a bust, but they, if he can find his potential, uh, you know, he's been a bust down there in Tampa Bay. But if he can find his potential, uh, you know, he could be a very integral part of that defensive line that, you know, with garbage getting sacks last year. I love the defensive tackle. They got Paul Soliai, former uh, Miami Dolphin, a uh, very solid player last year. He had 14 starts, one sack, and 30 tackles. By me, he's a nose tackle. And they got Rasheed Hagman, really big fan of this guy. I think he's going to be uh, have a much better second year than he did his first year. Only one sack last year and 20 tackles. Uh, but I think he's a whole lot of upside. I wouldn't even be surprised if he takes over the starting job for Paul Soliai. Uh, now the left outside linebacker, probably, if I had to say my favorite defensive player in the draft, was Vic Beasley. I mean, they needed sack help. They were like, I mean, they must have been uh, one of the lowest in the leagues in sacks, throwing the exact stats. But just looking at the individual stats, my God, like maybe like ten sacks total on the team. Uh, Vic Beasley has all the potential to be a double-digit sack player as a rookie, and I would put him out there for a potential rookie of the year. So I'm, I'm I was glad with that pick uh, right there. They also have Brooks Reed coming over from the Houston Texans. Hopefully, he can have the similar success that Connor Barwin did in Philly. Uh, Middle linebacker, one of the best players, Paul Warlow, really underrated. I remember, like, I actually before I made these rosters my own, he was like a 76. I was like, Are you kidding me? All Paul Warlow does does is tackle. He had like 130 tackles last year, two sacks. Uh, you know, second was he second in the team in sacks last year? That's ridiculous. But unbelievable. I believe he was undrafted. Was he an undrafted free agent or like a seventh round pick? Something super super low out of Delaware. Uh, big fan. This guy is sick. And then a right outside linebacker, Justin Durant, coming from the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, just added some solid depth. So, I mean, their linebacking core is uh, their whole defense right now. There's no big superstars. I think Vic Beasley has the potential. Other than that, there's just a bunch of solid guys. Good, solid, uh, you know, white collar. Um, now, looking at the corner, Desmond Trufant, we gave him an 85, one of the rising corners in the NFL. Uh, last year, Trufant had three interceptions, 60 tackles, uh, 16 pass deflections. So, he's really becoming and establishing himself one of the top defensive players in the league. Young defensive players, that is. Man, Washington is just fucking churning out sick defensive players. Uh, and then you got Robert Alford, three interceptions last year, 76, solid, uh, but not nothing too amazing. Look, they also got Jalen Collins in the second round, which he has a whole lot of upside. Didn't start a lot at LSU, which is why he kind of dropped it. I think he had uh, a bunch of issues, some off-the-field stuff uh, and injuries, but I think there's a lot of upside there, especially for a defense that's been as piss poor as Atlanta has been these last couple of years. Uh, free safety, Kamal Ishmael, we gave him a 79. Uh, last year, four interceptions, 70, er, four interceptions and 90 tackles. So, you know, uber effective from the safety position. Uh, and then strong safety, Willie Moe, William Moore, uh, one of the biggest hitting safeties in the NFL. Uh, last year, Willie Moe, what he, I think he actually got hurt, I believe. Uh, yeah, we only started seven games, had tw- 20 tackles, but, I mean, when he's back there, he was a really quarterback of the secondary. Uh, so, yeah, he's a solid player as always. Then you got Matt Bryant, one of the best kickers in the NFL. Uh, we gave him a 91. And Matt Bosher, you know, top upper echelon punter for that. Almost, almost 60, or 46 yards per punt average. So we gave him an 89. But there you have it, guys. Those are your ratings for uh, the Atlanta Falcons for Madden 16. As always, uh, 16 likes. This video will be up. Or 16 likes. What the fuck? 30 likes. New video up soonish. 50 likes. New video up immediately. Uh, subscribe to Beast Mode TV. And until next time, guys, it's your boy C4. Say peace out.